for a six month period, the end of 2012 and the beginning of 2013, I worked for six months giving some pastoral support while the pastoral team was in transition. One of the things that Ann and I talked about as a possible project for me to work on was how to more effectively help those who come in seeking help from the church. I have watched that process for many, many years, beginning in 1978, and knew as an associate in ministry for 14 years the number of times that people came into the office seeking some help, knowing that we had a reputation for helping. All of that I wanted to preserve in my own pastorate, but was always concerned for the next 15 years of how much time it really does take to help folks in need and how little time it seemed like we were able to give them. So it, it felt to me during that period of time in 2012 and 13 that maybe we could do something better by taking that whole process out of the office. And in that desire, Bootstraps was born. I visited churches in the area, found that very few were doing anything that was very organized and really that they felt good about. And so in the process of interviewing other churches in probably a four or five mile radius of this one, decided there wasn't a very organized, meaningful program that helped people in need that was effective on an ongoing basis. That was the birth of Bootstraps and Blessing. The Bootstraps idea, simply the idea of the old cowboys saying you have to lift yourself up by your own bootstraps if you're going to get anywhere. Well, that's really not possible. Um, to lift yourself up, you could do one foot at a time maybe, but the whole idea is that you really have to have somebody bend over and give you some help. The blessing part, obviously, is a blessing for those that we can help, but it's also a real blessing for those who are volunteering and helping and spending time with those who come in. All of that together birthed Bootstraps and Blessings in February of 2013. Um, I had been involved with Family Promise for a long time, and at a certain point it was time for me to move on to another mission. And I knew Mary Hulse had started uh, Bootstraps, so I started volunteering for that and just fell in love with the idea of helping our neighbors who, who really need it. Mary Hulst uh, approached me after I think I had volunteered maybe for two years and asked me if I would take over because she'd done it for five years and obviously she has a lot of other things uh, that she's busy with. Um, so I was delighted to be chosen by her and uh, took over, I think it was in 2019. Uh, so we had a full year before the pandemic. Uh, things went very smoothly during the pandemic. It was really off and on because of uh, just some of the things that happened. Uh, I noticed that David had taken a real interest this past year, so that's when I uh, asked if he was interested in co uh, coordinating uh, the mission with me, and fortunately he agreed. He adds a, a great deal to it. He sees things from a different perspective than I do. He has such a heart, so it's wonderful to have him uh, working with me. My family has been involved in hunger issues and with homeless programs since the 80s. Uh, my brother has was the director of um, education and publicity education and publicity for Heifer International and my parents were on the board of directors for this City of Corpus Christi Church's homeless program. Uh, when I was in college I worked one summer at the camp that was owned by the H.E. Butt Foundation. They had a game that we would play called Save the World. It was based on uh, verses in Matthew 25. The game insisted of uh, the kids going up to a kid, 
I was hungry and you fed me. And they would feed the kid behind them. And then the kid behind them would turn around and um, feed the next kid. They would do, I was, um, in, I was in prison and you visited me. They would climb through a window in our cabin and do the same type thing. So we went through all of these different things. That stuck with me the rest of my adult life. So when I stopped working, when I retired, I was aware of bootstraps and I said, well, I'm gonna get involved in this. And that was, uh, I've never looked back. My name is Margie Jonell, and I have been part of Bootstraps for from the beginning, actually, about 10 years. And I'm taking a brief pause right now because I've taken on a couple other responsibilities. With my counseling background in public education, I thought that I could have something to give to this program, as we have so many people who need to come and talk about what, what their needs are. And so I guess in a way I'm a helper type person and find that rewarding for myself as well. Well, we greet people, um, find out what their needs are, if they want to shower or uh, laundry. That is a huge service for homeless folks. Um, then when they want to shower, they might need change of clothes. So I tend to be in the back room where there's, you know, handing out clothing, also making up the goodie bags that we try to give everybody, and reorganizing. So. We uh, give uh, a small amount of King Super's gift certificates, $10 for an individual, 15 for a family, and we give bus passes every three months. And, um, then we offer a food bag, just snacks that they can that don't need any cooking, peanut butter, crackers, uh, and um, then uh, we offer showers and laundry, and it's amazing the the trade we get to come in for showers and laundry. We have two showers and three la the laundromats, and so. Um, the bootstraps uh, volunteers, one will man the desk and keep track of who's coming in and if they're eligible for their uh, food, uh, King Super certificates, and explain the new ones, uh, what goes on, and sign them up. Then we have uh, usually one that hangs out in the room where we have clothing and, um, and other resources. And then we have a couple of people that roam around and shepherd people in through laundry and showers and all that. So I'm a roamer. A I'm a roamer, yeah. It's just good to give people a fresh set of clothes. We certainly do need more volunteers. I think it opens your eyes to the fact that there are lots of homeless around here and you know, we serve a niche particular to these people so they don't have to take a bus to downtown or similar situations. Uh, to me, it's the connection that you make with these individuals that come in. Some of them come in very angry or uh, upset about something and hopefully by our calming influence and help, they, they, they get more at peace uh, somewhat. It's nice to learn what their stories are, to see if there's anything that we can help them with. Uh, it's very rewarding to see them come back, although we would like for them to be able to be self-sufficient. Uh, but we, you make friends with them. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, that's just rewarding to see the relationships develop. I think that I have always been an advocate for the people who are less fortunate fortunate than I am. And um, I thought that perhaps in this program I could do something to help someone else. Some of our guests have fallen into really difficult times. They've lost relationships, they lost jobs, they've lost housing, others have drugs 
and alcohol problems and mental health issues. And I think that in the early days of Bootstraps, we spent a lot of time talking with individuals. And I think that was part of the thing that I really, really enjoyed because I could hear their stories and be a listening ear for them to perhaps be the kind face that they had not encountered on the streets of Denver. The idea uh, of a child not being able to sleep in a safe, healthy environment really bothered me. Uh, and that's why I started with Family Promises because I guess I also had my own son and it just be, it became so personal that these children have nothing to do with their circumstances and they need uh, us to step in and help them. Uh, and then it kind of translated into people who are older who are in this position. We do have families come in to bootstraps. It's not as often. We had one this past week. Um, so it's just uh, people, they don't have all the advantages that I had and we need to step up and help them. That's what I love about this church too, is that it's a very loving and caring group. They've always stepped up and given sleeping bags, coats. It's just, it's, it's a wonderful uh, group to belong to. Um, I volunteer because it serves the community. I was a social worker at the VA hospital for medicine and surgery. So I saw a lot of veterans that had needs and I'm conscious of trying to ask them what kind of needs they might have. I had what I would consider a fairly dramatic call to ministry when I was a junior in high school. And that call seemed to me to involve helping people. It was really the person-to-person -person opportunity to help people. At that point in my life, it didn't occur to me I'd be preaching and teaching. Well, teaching maybe, but certainly not preaching, because this was a long time ago, and I had never seen a woman in ministry at that point in time. So it really was the helping piece. I take pretty seriously uh, Jesus' sermon in Nazareth when he talked about um, recovery of sight to the blind and setting the oppressed free. All of that seemed to me to be a part of ministry. And that really is, I think, the ministry that Bootstraps has. The other thing that's always in my head is St. Francis of Assisi saying, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. The bootstrap ministry in many ways is that kind of ministry. Certainly we talk with folk, we try to be compassionate, friendly, uh, caregiving, but it really is a ministry of giving as much direct help as we can without preaching, without a lot of words, but more compassion and um, tangible help. And that really is. I think my passion in ministry. You can work in bootstraps and it doesn't take long to see the real need that the that our clients have, or I should say our guests have. Um, some of these people truly have not eaten for a couple days and the hunger is real. Some of these people have not showered for a week or so and the need is real. But also, one thing I like up here is that we try to treat each person as an individual, not a group of people, the homeless or the poor. And we make connections with these people. And for me, that's extremely important. As you make with connections, walls start to fall and you start making relationships with some of the clients. and they share with you things and you share with them things and it's just a giving situation that is very gratifying and it fuels you to fuels me to come back every time I work here well you know I meet people that I don't meet otherwise and uh, it's a bit of a challenge but uh, we meet people that uh, 
live different lives. And uh, one of my friends used to say, why don't they work? Well, they work harder than we do. If you don't have anything, you got to scrap for everything. And so I appreciate that they work. Also, um, early on in uh, bootstraps, we used to uh, take people away in a separate room and interview them. And more than once I had someone say, nobody ever listened to me. And it, so we learn how other people live. And my friends will say, I couldn't live like that. Well, I couldn't live like that, but they do. And get to appreciate the needs that are out there and, uh, and appreciate them as people. Lois was one of my memories. She was living in her car, worked occasionally, so she had some money. But the main thing that she came in for was to do her laundry and take a shower. And she came in every Monday and did that faithfully. She was pleasant, she was appreciative, all of those things that were really a part of why she became a friend to so many of the volunteers. But then, after quite a few years, when she was not coming in on a regular basis, she had found a job. We received a beautiful thank you note that was sent to the church. And that meant a great deal to me, to know how much she appreciated the help that she had been given. And I would say the majority of the people who come are very grateful. Another wonderful memory is after Dick Baker died, Dick and Marie had been regular volunteers for quite some time. It meant a lot to both of them. They were very happy to be here on Mondays. After Dick died, there was an amount of his memorial fund that Marie was trying to think how we could possibly use that for bootstraps. The thing we needed at that time more than anything else was a large commercial size hot water heater. And that money from Dick Baker's memory memorial fund was used for that purpose. And what a gift to have a hot shower after you've been under a bridge or on the street is incredibly important. I have a couple of, uh, of experiences that I remember from working with bootstraps. One was several years ago, um, I recognized the voice of a person walking in the door. And it happened to be a former student of mine that I had worked with in high school. This was then maybe t 20 years later for her. And now her family had lost their apartment. They, had, uh, they were living, four adults, a dog and a baby were living in a van. And they came here to get help. And I think it was reassuring for her to see that somebody from her background her past was actually here and she was very open to talk about her needs at that time. Another time that I remember is uh, we had a couple of Chinese women come in regularly every three months to get their, their King Supers coupons and so on. And they spoke no English and my Chinese is gone from my brain and we talked through Google Translate and found out that she was from the same city where I was born. So that was sort of a, a cool c coincidence. And we had a, had a good relationship. I can't help when I see people standing on the corner asking for money, I know some of them are gaming the system, but I see the real need behind a lot of them. Uh, these people don't have something that they can turn to for a variety of reasons. Some of them we may not approve of them. Some of them, it's it's not my reason. It's not my business to determine why they do what they do. But I see the need and. Helping this way, I think that we are doing something significant for them each time they come in.
I think that working with bootstraps has affected my faith in several ways. One thing, of course, I think about what the Bible tells us that Jesus said that what we do for the least of these, my friends, we do for him. And I think that that is so important because we are the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. And even if we can give them an ear to listen to their problems or a to-go bag to take with them, or to do laundry or whatever. I think that we are showing them human kindness. And I think that it's my responsibility as a Christian to do as much as I can for my neighbor. I know that um, Jesus and God want us to help other people and that, that's what we need to do. I feel like that's part of why I'm here is that I need to be giving and uh, this is, one uh, call, it, it really calls to me, it, it speaks to my heart, so that's, that's why. <laughs> like I say, creatures of God, they're God's people, and they need help, so uh, that's what we're here for, to help people. I think it goes back to that game that I played with my campers in college. Um, I see it in real life. What can you say? Um, I, I, I know that we're doing God's work and I know that each person that we help is a child of God. Um, it's just something I can do and I know that I'm doing something that God wants me to do. So it, it strengthens my faith because it helps me become more connected with the kingdom of God, I guess. Our faith says, you know, give, serve one another give to one another, help the poor, um, so that's why. We need more volunteers. <laughs> Each shift that we have, and we have a great group of volunteers who've been very faithful and loyal and they're amazing. Uh, but each shift, there are different positions, uh, and there, you know, it's not real strict about it. But there's ones where you have a lot of interaction with our guests. There's others where you're in our storeroom organizing it and doing whatever. So do not be uh, afraid of uh, the interaction. It's a very comfortable, informal process. Uh, so if you're hesitant, please give me a call. I'd love to meet with you and talk to you about it because we definitely uh, will need more volunteers, especially as we get busier. We've gone from two shifts to one, and that one shift we're getting up as high as 23 people, and it just seems like the need is, is greater every week. So please love to have you volunteer. But we also could use help keeping the storeroom organized. Uh, that's one big thing. I would love to have somebody help me redo the resources um, information sheet. Uh, so believe me, I have, I have ideas if you can't do it on Mondays. Please keep on giving peanut butter. I just want to thank Calvary. I think Calvary steps up and just has such an open heart. I really appreciate it and that's why I've stayed involved is it's such a loving community. I, I feel like this is my family. I think that Calvary has maintained this pro program for 10 years and I think that's amazing and awesome. And I think that it's a program that's not even on our, in our budget and yet we have been able to accomplish pretty great things for the past 10 years. And the congregation has been willing to come here with peanut butter jars and crackers and, and water and some clothing and shoes and, and so forth. And I think that that speaks very highly of Calvary for being a very generous uh, con congregation. And also the fact that we can provide laundry facilities and um, as well as um, showers for people. I think those are incredibly important things that we, we are providing for people who, who need that kind of help. Our numbers keep on growing too, and more people are finding their way to Calvary for help. The need is great out there, 
And I think we've done a marvelous job in helping those people who come to our church. You know, I, I was just thinking, I am grateful for the support that Calvary has given to this ministry. I had no idea at the beginning that it would last this long. I'm grateful for the volunteers that give so freely and so generously. Um, we had one this morning, it came in at the last minute because someone was ill. And it's that kind of response that keeps this ministry going. But I can't tell you how many times over the years somebody has slipped me some monetary um, support, either a check or a bill, a hundred dollar bill, more often than you'd probably think, just saying, let this go to bootstrap some blessing. So it's that kind of support. Plus, um, we've changed the ministry over the years. It has grown in some ways. We've replaced some of what Bootstrap's done with long-standing traditions. I remember the year that we no longer had the Thanksgiving breakfast. Instead, we had a meal for the homeless on Thanksgiving. And we had more volunteers than we had participants because the church felt that that was something that the congregation could do. So I think there's always been a heart for this ministry, which is wonderful. Well, we can't solve the whole world's problems. It's one step at a time. So find a, find a slot where you can do a little bit of help and see what happens from there. Yeah.